My glorious resurrection from hell by Freddy Ruano an illness attacked my body. At the beginning of this illness, I didn't give much attention to it because I was just running a mild fever. I thought to myself, okay, it's just a cold. I began to take painkillers at home for three more days. On the fifth day, my temperature had become worse, so I visited the doctor. The doctor examined me and prescribed some medication and I went back home. I started to take the medications, but they didn't seem to work. By the eighth day, the fever had become even worse and, on top of that, I was also feeling a strange coldness in my whole body. My bones felt like they were being crushed and I felt like my head was going to explode. My family then decided to take me to another doctor. This doctor examined me and said, you are not sick. My family complained and told him, how can you say he's not sick when we've been taking care of him for the past eight days and he's been going through horrible fever and pain because of his illness? The doctor examined me again and replied, your temperature is normal, your pulse is normal, I cannot find any alteration in your body. However, I will give you medication because you say that you are sick. I will be honest with you, though, you are just wasting your money because you are healthy. He gave me the medicine and I went home. When I got back home, my family was criticizing the doctor's diagnosis and saying that he wasn't qualified to practice medicine. I tried to stand up from where I was sitting, but my body was shaken by a nervous cold and I fainted on the floor. My family picked me up and took me to my bed. Then, this coldness that I felt, became stronger and possessed my entire being. As the hours slowly passed, I felt that my head was going to explode, and that cold was shaking every part of my being as I rested. Praise God that my family members are Christians. They invited brothers in Christ from the church to pray with me, but I wasn't healed. On day 15, all my internal organs became inflamed, and I could neither eating, sleep, drink water. Every eating experience was accompanied by pain. Even to sleep was equally a painful experience. When my family saw my deteriorating condition, they took me to the Salvadoran Clinic, which is a private medical center. The doctors were immediately concerned and they put me on oxygen, saline solutions, and a heart monitor as they began to run tests. Two days of tests continued as I was in the clinic. But I also want to tell all of you friends who read this that something strange happened in that place. My body was totally healthy. The pains that I had disappeared. The headaches, the cold, the pains in my body were gone. My family decided to take me home because keeping me in the clinic was very expensive. Time passed and I do not know how long but suddenly my body was overtaken again by that nervous cold and fever. On day 25, I had already been 10 days without eating, sleeping, and without drinking water and my body was dehydrated. I just looked like a living skeleton. My family realized I was dying, so they took me to the General Hospital of El Salvador. As I arrived, one of the doctors told me, do not worry, soon you will leave healed. Little did that doctor understand that this illness was not natural, but supernatural. This sickness was the will of God. The doctors kept giving me different diagnoses, but they were never right. If I were still there today, they would be debating about what was wrong with me. The doctors tested me at this hospital for three days and couldn't find a thing wrong with me. They used every kind of test that was available. It was so strange because each time I visited a doctor, the symptoms would leave and then whatever was tormenting me would come back to possess me when I returned home. I arrived home and my family was even more concerned. They said, may God keep you healthy this time. May God keep that illness away from you and have mercy on you so that this will be your last visit to the doctor. However, the illness returned and on day 33, I died. I had a life-changing meeting with our Lord Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. On that day I was even worse. I had fever that morning, but I fell asleep in the middle of the day. I had some rest for about an hour, and then that illness came back to my body. About 7 p.m., my mother had been praying for me. After prayer she said, My son, thank God the fever has left your body. Listen, since you do not want to eat or drink, at least try to sleep a little and rest. She was going to the living room and told me, I will leave you alone for a moment, there is someone who is asking for me. I was looking at the door and suddenly saw a woman come through the door. 
She looked like a normal woman with long hair to her waist and she had grey clothes on. I turned my face to the wall, because I thought it was a sister from the church that my mother used to attend. The angel of God appeared to a sick ma suddenly, I heard a voice that told me, I have come here to take you. I turned my face to see who the person really was, and it was not the same person that I had seen before. His appearance was, in few words, just horrible. It is hard to describe with words how awful it was. I just saw that his eyes were red, but what made me feel more scared was that I saw him take out from his clothes a dagger of about two feet long and rushed me and then we began to fight. You can imagine how loud I yelled out as my family was in the living room talking. When they heard me yelling they ran at once and pushed the door and they were amazed, because they saw my body raised, jumping, falling, and spinning around that bed, as if I was fighting with an imaginary person. When my family saw me, they kept asking me what was wrong with me, what was going on. I begged them to help me, to take death far from me, because I thought it was death who had come to take me. My distressed family shouted to me and told me that they could not come inside or even move because of a supernatural force inside their bodies that would not let them move from where they were standing. I continued fighting with that being, and my body began to weaken. I felt that he began to conquer me. When I was defeated, I felt how that dagger passed through my heart and I died. I do not know how long time had passed. My friend, I want to tell you about three things that the devil is putting in the minds of the people. He is putting a lot of disbelief and a lot of conformity to the world in the hearts of men. People wonder whether the devil is like what the world shows us he is or if he is like what the Bible shows us. The devil wants people to believe that the soul does not exist. The devil says that the grave is the end of your existence, nothing more. He also wants people to believe that there is a purgatory where people will go to pay for their sins and then God will take them from there to put them in heaven with him. I want to tell you my friend, that these are some of the worst lies from the devil because in the first place, the soul does exist. Secondly, the grave is not the end of life, after this life there is another life that is eternal. Thirdly, purgatory does not exist. That is a lie from the devil and an invention of men, because if a person does not repent, or move away from his sins and get close to Jesus Christ and settle the sin debt with God, he will have to go to hell like I did. When that dagger went through my heart, and I died, I do not know how much time passed afterwards, but my soul, my true personality started to leave my body. The real personality is not the one that you can see and touch, but the real person's personality is the soul. The soul is the one that feels, sees, reasons, hears, and also is the one that will have to stand once and for all before the Lord to give account of one's deeds on the last day. Man left his body and floating. I began to leave my body and to float in the room. I could see my brothers crying and shouting that I was dead. I could see my mother on her knees crying before the presence of the Lord and I could also see my own body pale and rigid on that bed. Inside that room, I contemplated the world for one last time, and then I began to feel that something was pulling me like a magnet with a darkness that began to cover me. I wanted to run away, but I couldn't, this being was pulling me at the speed of light. I couldn't escape even though I wanted to. Toward us, I could see some kind of mountain, and when we got closer I could see an opening like a crater. In the bottom of that crater I saw a reddish mass, that wanted to reach us. It was there that I saw the lies of the devil, and I also see that we had a soul and that the grave is not the end of everything, because my body was not yet buried in the grave when I was already entering that place. I could see also that there was no purgatory because I asked this being that took me there, what kind of place is that, the lake of fire. He answered me, this place is hell, your home, and it is where you are going now. I began to cry out to God. I wanted to run away, but I could not because that door did not let me go. I started to say to death that I was a son of God, that Jesus Christ was my father and that I was his son, and that he said in his word that everyone who believes in Jesus everyone who cries out to him could not come to hell because Jesus had prepared a special place for his soul however, you who reads this, I want to tell you something, especially for those who want to have the privilege of a position inside the church, for all of those who want to work in the work of God or those who want to reach eternal salvation, be very careful of how your life is lived before the presence of the Lord. Before I had this experience, I spent seven long years of my life telling people that I was a Christian, 
but my deeds were the same as any lost worldly person. Why was I saying that I was a son of God? I will tell you what my life was like before. I was born with a religious background. My family was religious, however, when I was nine years old I started to get lost in sins like smoking, having sex with women and getting drunk. When I was twelve, I became independent of my father and started to practice witchcraft, the occult, spiritualism, and the last thing that I practiced was the Rosicrucian faith. Because of an illness that I had when I was twelve and since I was five years old I was blind and I lost hearing in my right ear, I accepted the gospel. I want to warn you that there are many who come to church just to receive their healing. There are others who come to church for fame or money. Others come to church just to get a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but I want to tell you, friend that you should never go to church for selfish or carnal reasons. You should only go to church to glorify the precious and holy name of the Lord. Nevertheless, I only wanted to get a physical healing for my life from church, and once I received it, I began to be active in the church. However, when I was active, the devil began to throw his darts, and I started to boast and be proud, hypocritical, rebellious, lying, and I even began to see my pastor as spiritually inferior to me, even though he is a great servant of God in my eyes, though, he was lower to me because that is a common problem of human beings, we put our eyes on men rather than God. There are many who will be lost because they want to feel more important than the pastor or the deacon, maybe because they have a title, or because they have possessions. I warn you friend, be very careful of how you are living. One day my pastor, guided by the Holy Ghost, told me, brother, repent and bear fruit worthy of repentance, or else one day you will know what the hand of God is. I answered him, how can you judge me if you are worse than I am? That is a major problem of human beings. Millions of souls are lost because they put their eyes on the actions of men and say, oh, if Christians are like her, I better stay how I am now. Others say, I won't go to church until they change the pastor or remove the deacon. I tell you today, my friend, set your eyes on Jesus Christ who, alone, will grant you salvation. The abyss of hell fire. That is why when, I was at the door to hell, because of all my wickedness and sinful deeds that I had done, I told death that I was a son of God, but death answered me, if you were a son of God, God would never have allowed me to bring you to this place. We began to go down and when we came to the place, I could see that it was covered with darkness and smoke. When death stopped, the darkness was drawn back like curtains. I then began to go inside and feel that fire and steam, and a mass that was melting something like boiling honey. I began to feel and hear the screams of millions and millions and millions of souls in that portion of hell. Death began to get ready to throw me into hell and when he was about to do it, right behind us a strong and powerful voice sounded, a glorious voice of the Lord that said, Stop there. When that voice sounded, the place where we were shook tremendously and death ran away from the presence of that wonderful being. I wanted to see who the voice came from, that sounded with so much authority that even death ran away from his presence. I wanted to see the face of the person that with his very voice made hell shake. When I turned to see him, I just saw a very strong light, and I could not see anything more. I just heard that he got closer and told me, Why are you saying that I am your father? Why are you saying that you are my son? It is true that I died on the cross in Calvary for your sins. It is true that I raised from the dead and brought the dead with me, but if you were my son, you would listen to my words, keep my commandments, and you would live a holy life. My sons are not adulterers, immoral people, idolaters, blasphemers, or drunkards. They do not practice witchcraft, boast, gossip, quarrel, create division, nor are they prostitutes, homosexuals, or thieves. All of them, absolutely all who practice these things belong to their father the devil. I felt like that voice was about to destroy me, and going to strike me dead. I thought this voice was going to send me to the bottom of hell. Fortunately after this, my friends, that hard, sharp, and powerful voice began to change into a melody and then I could feel such love and tenderness, it felt like his voice came to me like a fresh breeze that caressed my body with a beautiful fragrance. Hallelujah. I began to hear him saying, Look, since you have had mercy on others, you have been given mercy and one more chance for your soul. Praise the holy name of Jesus. I want to tell you my friend, the Lord told me, 
Freddy Ruano, I didn't like how you prayed, fasted or watched, nor how you gave your offerings and your tithes, or how you preached. Because the Bible tells us that, whatever a man sows, that shall he also harvest. I had been sowing wickedness, so the harvest was eternal punishment. The Lord was very clear to me when he told me that I had one chance given to me only because I had mercy for others. Those others, he was referring to were all of you, my friends, who listen or read what I am telling you. For the sake of humanity, God allowed this miracle to happen so you can be warned that there is a place of torment and so you can repent, depart from sin, and escape eternal condemnation. If you do this, you will have the chance to enjoy Jesus for eternity. Just because of God's mercy all of you can listen or read this testimony. The mercy that we have been given today is for the purpose of magnifying and glorifying the Holy Name.